Hey guys, happy Catter Day, because, you know, CAD, Saturday, forget it, George coined that term, pretend you never heard it. Today, we're going to address a simple problem I have in my home shop. When I'm working in the garage, I'm usually moving my tripod all over the place, not only to get shots from different angles, but to also just get it out of my way. So one thing I'd like to do is make a tripod dolly. This simplifies my life in a lot of small ways. The big one is that I don't need to make sure my tripod feet are evenly splayed out every time I pick it up and put it down which happens a lot because I'm often fine-tuning my camera angle. It might seem minor, but every time that happens, you have to check and readjust your camera to make sure it's still level. So let's see what we can do to fix this minor but recurring hassle in Carbide Create. Before I do anything in the software though, I'm gonna make sure I have an idea of what I wanna make. This can be something simple like a napkin sketch, back of the envelope, notebook sketch, whatever, but I wanna make sure I have a preconceived notion of what I'm making. So here is what I started with, a rudimentary sketch with just the vaguest of notions of how large I want it to be. Now that I have a plan for what kind of shapes I want to make, I'm going to fire up Carbide Create and define my setup. My stock is going to be a piece of MDF about 14 inches square and 3 quarters of an inch thick. I'll start by modeling the hub. I'm going to draw out a triangle with a 4 inch radius with one point oriented in either X or Y. This lets me easily draw in holes through which my arms will be pinned. One of them will be one inch from the tip of the triangle, the other will be an extra inch and a half beyond that. To create a radial pattern of these holes, I'll duplicate both of my holes and then, while I have them selected, along with the circle inscribing my triangular body, I'll hit the rotate button. By using the circle to establish my center of rotation, I can pivot everything about the center of the triangle as opposed to the center of the bounding box of the triangle. Now I can apply a 120 degree rotation and the holes will come along for the ride and end up where I intend for them to be. And then I'll duplicate the circles a second time and do it all again. Since I need two of these hub brackets, I'll duplicate this entire group and move it off to the side. Now for the arms. First we need to make some long bars. You could use the filleting feature when making rectangles. I'm choosing instead to combine rectangles with circles. On one end of my arm, I'll make a pair of circles an inch and a half apart. These are where I'll pin the arms to the hub. On the other end, I'm drawing in two features. One is a pocket where my tripod feet will sit, the other is a counterboard hole. This is where my wheels are going to go. I guess now is a good time to explain that the wheels I plan on using are salvaged from a defective office chair that I truly despised. These wheels are mounted on a shaft with a ring that locks into a recess to prevent them from being pulled out easily. I'll need a hole in my MDF that will accommodate the shaft, and then a pocket that provides the clearance for the locking ring to open up. Since we need three legs, I'll duplicate the first one twice. And then I'll rearrange everything in a way that makes use of my MDF most efficiently. For the toolpaths, I'll cut around all my holes, then I'll pocket out anything that doesn't need to go completely through my MDF, and then I'll cut around all the pieces using tabs as insurance to make sure that these parts don't get knocked loose and chewed up by the end mill. I'm using an 8th inch end mill for everything here with a cutting feed rate of 65 inches per minute and a plunge feed rate of 15 inches per minute. Both of these are conservative figures which I would later crank up using feed rate override. My depth per pass is 0.045 inches. I'll export my toolpaths and head to the garage. I'll set my zero off the wasteboard, but since my MDF is secured to the wasteboard with double sided tape, I want to account for the thickness of the tape too. Here I'm using a little spacer, which is really just a sticker, underneath my touch probe so that I don't cut into my tape and gum up my cutter. Once the touch probe sets my Z0, I can move the machine into the lower left hand corner of my stock where I want my X and Y0 to be, and then start cutting. As these cuts progressed and I saw how effortlessly the shape Oko was ripping through the MDF, I bumped up my feed rates by 30%. When the program completed, I cut my pieces out by severing the tabs. To clean up the tabs and ensure that everything slides freely, I used my router table to put a chamfer on all the edges. I made sure the chamfer height was greater than that of my tabs to eliminate all traces of them. With the components all cleaned up, I could install my office chair casters, and these snapped in perfectly and were retained in the hole. One thing I didn't account for was the length of the bolts I would need to pin my arms. So instead of using bolts that stuck through the far side of my hub and using lock nuts to hold the pin joints in place, I used threaded inserts and Loctite so I could get away with using 1.5 inch bolts. These bolts will be permanent while the inside bolts will simply be held by gravity to allow for easy breakdown. And that is basically all there is to it. This tripod dolly design can be easily unpinned to stow away, scaled up for larger tripods, and super easy to make. 
The only things I plan on adding in the future are a means to clamp down the feet of my tripod so it doesn't tip and fall off the dolly if I hit a bump on the floor, and throw a little more weight on the frame of the dolly so it's less top heavy. And alright, let's just do that now. I'll make a little slotted device that looks like a clamp with a forked nose, isolate a region at the tip to relieve, and machine this out. Now I can quickly lock the tripod in and prevent it from tipping over if it gets bumped or catches something on the floor. I'll be uploading the plans for this design on Cut Rocket, so if you want to build off this design or just take a look at how I set up the tool pads, feel free to download it and give it a look. That's all for now folks, until next time, good luck and have fun machining your own projects.